Welcome to Wednesday, everybody, otherwise known as Hump Day! Yeah! Yeah, that's right. It's Hump Day. And this is Victory's Virtual Workshop, where we create confidence and clarity for your financial life. Now, when I am talking to people who are not yet clients, They'll occasionally ask me about their own investments, you know, what they should be looking at, what they should be looking for, how they should be reviewing their own progress. So today what I want to present is a list of 10 things to think about, and then we'll go through and take a look at one of the checklists we offer if you want to take a look at your own investment planning. So Reviewing your investment accounts regularly is crucial to ensuring your financial goals are on track, but it's not the only piece. So let's look at what you need to look at, not only in your investments, but in your bigger planning activities as well. So 10 things to consider. First is the, the one that people always focus on, and that is performance evaluation. And yes, it's important to evaluate performance. You need to look at some benchmarks to assess your perform portfolio's performance against a, and I'm going to emphasize relevant, a relevant benchmark to gauge your success. What is a relevant benchmark? Well, it's going to highly depend on what type of investor you are and what type of planning you've done to get to this point. Now, that's the big picture. You want to look at your portfolio versus a benchmark to gauge how you're progressing. But you also need to go a little bit deeper and look at individual asset performance as well. Just make sure that everything is performing the way you think it should be um, based on the planning you've done to this point. I like to use some simple benchmarks a lot of times with clients based on their risk tolerance. There are plenty of them out there now where you can find a conservative or a moderately conservative or an aggressive uh, index or index fund to track right alongside your portfolio and see how you're doing. Check out my website. Uh, you'll find some there as well. If you want, uh, victoryindependentplanning.com forward slash compared to what. What that gives you is a snapshot of stocks, bonds, moderate, and conservative portfolios all in one chart. Second thing to think about is the allocation of your assets. You know, are you properly diversified? Are you rebalancing? Are you required to rebalance? Do you need to rebalance? Or is that already happening uh, based on some trades that are going on throughout the year? Uh, do you have a risk management uh, or risk minimization plan in place with your asset allocation. To know if you do, it really requires that you've done a risk assessment, that you know not only how much risk you can tolerate, what your preference is, but what your economic risk taking would allow. Meaning somebody in the same position as you financially, could you take more risk? Uh, so there's your feeling, and then there's the fact. Uh, and typically your portfolio needs to fall somewhere in between those two things. And you also need to think about risk versus volatility. And there are a couple of ways to measure those two things. Risk is the maximum drawdown, in my mind, in a portfolio. So how much has that portfolio actually gone down historically when markets have dropped? That's your risk. That's how much money you have at risk at any one time. And, and that's versus standard deviation, which a lot of people conflate with risk, but standard deviation is really measuring volatility, how much the portfolio will fluctuate over time. Number four, check out your fees and costs. Make sure that the expense ratios on any underlying ETFs or mutual funds are reasonable. Um, double check your transaction costs. Most places now don't have any, uh, but if you are paying transaction costs, uh, be sure that those are reasonable as well. Look, it, it's okay to pay fees. 
It's not a zero fee business in most cases, but you need to know who are you paying and why are you paying them? Number five, tax implications. Uh, make sure you're optimizing your portfolio for tax efficiency, considering the impact of capital gains rates and dividends, and then taking advantage of accounts like Roth IRAs uh, to limit the amount of taxation either now or in the future, uh, based on whether you choose the Roth or the traditional uh, version of it. Number six, make sure your financial goals align. This probably ought to be first. Uh, you know, let's make sure that you have some goals to begin with so we know why we're investing the money and what we're trying to get out of this. Uh, income needs is number seven. It's part of the income planning and income planning is almost always and everywhere going to drive your investment planning because we are at the end of the day, sometime going to turn on these assets in order to provide you income. If that's not now, that is a different investment plan than it would be if it is now. So think about the income needs. Do, make sure that you have a plan for where and when you're going to draw income and estimates on how much you or how long those sources are going to last. Number eight, market conditions. Yes, you need to be aware of what's going on in the market. As I, as I speak, we're waiting for a, an announcement from, from the Fed, uh, which is going to make sure that you are aware of what is happening so that when you open up your statement and you potentially see a loss, you're not surprised. You know that there are things going on in the market uh, where it's been soft or it's been you know downright terrible uh, so that you know what to expect and you aren't surprised. It's not to say that losses aren't going to happen or that market volatility is bad, but at least a baseline knowledge of what is going on in the market uh, will help you keep your sanity. Uh, number nine is investment strategy. Uh, we need some consistency there. We need to ensure your investment strategy remains consistent across your entire financial plan. So what we're really trying to do here is work top down from a financial plan down to uh, tax planning and then investment strategy. It need That investment strategy needs to take into account all of the other planning pieces that should have happened before this. And then number 10 is professional advice. If you're getting it, uh, consider consulting with a financial advisor uh, to personalize all of this and get a professional review of your investments to make sure that they are indeed uh, aligning with all of the planning that, that you should be doing to get to the point where you would invest money. So regular reviewing all these 10 aspects of your investment accounts can help you stay on track and achieve your financial objectives and make better decisions about your portfolio. So let's take a look at what a review might look like uh, as you go through and uh, take a look at some of these things. This is a checklist that uh, I, I send to clients um, and it begins with, do you have comprehensive planning? Do you have something that is guiding your investment objectives? Meaning, are you planning for a major purchase? Uh, do you have an income plan in place? Are future generations part of that plan? And if so, have we gone in and done the administrative work to make sure that the, the accounts are going to pass to them in an efficient manner? Have you established what your risk tolerance is and why it is that way? And have you established that that risk tolerance is going to allow you to grow your funds at a, a sufficient rate to fund future income needs? So only by planning, only by sitting down and doing a comprehensive plan that includes income, tax, and investment, can you even get to the point where you can answer these questions intelligently. From there, I actually skip the investment issues for now and come down to tax issues. Are you trying to minimize your tax liability? I don't know anybody in my practice who's ever answered no to that. So limiting taxes is a normal business practice uh, day in and day out. And then uh, once you've aligned your future income needs and your uh, planning pieces. Well, now we can start to look at the 
asset allocation that you would need to match those plans. And we can let, take a look at the types of accounts that you own, taxable, tax deferred, uh, and uh, tax free, and make sure that your income is going to come from places that optimize your ability to get the income in the most tax efficient manner. From there, we can continue on with uh, some of the investment issues. Um, you know, if you are working with a professional, you should have a baseline knowledge of what the selection criteria are for the investments, how do they monitor, and how do they present you with performance. If you're doing it on your own, I highly recommend writing out your invest investment plan and how you do these things and then updating that as time goes on. Are you planning to take distributions? That's always the number one uh, question. It's part of the planning. Um, it's part of the overall understanding of where your income is going to come from, but things pop up over time. Um, so short term, you may need to take some distributions you hadn't planned on. Well, where are you going to take those funds from? Uh, it's a, it's an important piece to understand. And then do you have uh, anything that you need to think about strategically that you want to see happen during periods of market decline? Do you have a strategy in place to harness your emotions, uh, but also to limit your losses if that's part of your strategy? And then again, if you're working with somebody, um, does the frequency of any account reviews or monitoring need to be updated? Is that something that based on your experience, you need more of or less of? Uh, that should be customizable uh, to your situation uh, if you're working with somebody. And if you're not working with somebody, I still highly recommend uh, doing scheduled reviews, putting them on your calendar and making sure you're going in and checking off the items, even in this particular checklist, so that you know that you've covered everything you need to cover uh, and that your investments are matching the overall planning that you've done. So remember, being on a glide path for and in retirement, I always say starts with this smart approach, making sure your sources of income, medical and healthcare planning, advanced planning, risk management, and tax efficient strategies all work together. And that's the entire idea of the checklist we just went through, which is available to you if you'd like it, or if you just want to ask me questions about uh, investments or any other topic in my Smart Approach to Retirement series, feel free to email me. I'm at Patrick at VictoryIndependentPlanning.com. And thanks for checking in this week. I will see you next Wednesday.